that one and the use this one no that one and that one that one and that one are brothers and this one is a cousin do a lot of sparring over food this one's starting to nibble on feed some hit <laughs> That's her daughter from last year. She's getting old enough now that she's getting pushed out. Aww. Well, he's gonna nibble on some of the hay. Wonder if they're gonna have horns. I think they are. Pick on anybody, it's not hers. Oh, oh you're gonna you're nib nibbling on some too, aren't you? Yeah, you're definitely gonna have horns. You have to put them out in separate containers, otherwise, they just beat each other up trying to get the most food. Woohoo, I got peas coming up. Look at them. And the rabbits haven't ate them. They would. If they could have got in there to them, they would have ate them. Um, although, germination rate's not great. Should be more of them up than that. But we'll take what we can get. Let me show you what I did. Y'all know if you've seen the earlier videos that I had a field fire and it burnt the front half of my greenhouse off. Well, about two, three years ago, I got one of these Harbor Freight, um, this is just a plastic, Harbor Freight greenhouses. I didn't even have it, I didn't even have it a whole week. I was in the process of getting it tied down. I mean, like really tied down, staked, double staked. And along came a uh, storm, and I was gathering up my stuff to go out there and stake it down better. Looked out the door, and it was gone. The whole thing, the whole greenhouse was gone. It blew way back there. So that plastic's been sitting back there for two or three years, and like I said, burnt the front part of my greenhouse off. So it really wasn't doing much good, and we've got some uh, we've got some major major weather coming in. Um, 30, 36 in the morning, 35, 36 in the morning, and then 30 degrees the day after that, and then 34 the day after that. So, and I had stuff growing in here. So I put this on, and I am. Um, fixed it to where I can still get in. I put the zipper part of it at the other end, which I'm going to open up because it's starting to get hot in here. Ooh, fog up. See, look at all my stuff. I need to plant these out, but I'll probably wait until, I'll probably wait until tomorrow because, or I mean after tomorrow. But look, my calendulas are blooming. Stuff's looking pretty good out here. I've got these um, pots with candles under them to light when it gets cold, so it'll keep things warm in here. I'm gonna, man, my glasses have fogged up. I can't even see. Anyway, so I can get a little heat in there and hopefully keep it above freezing. And uh, I think after. Probably after Thursday or Friday, the weather 
the weather should break and we should be done with all this um, freezes and then I might be able to start putting stuff outside. See I put put the zipper over here. See what hat see see it's all melted. Anyway, so I roll this back that way it can get some air. And got a new chainsaw. So I'm cleaning stuff up and getting ready to start my um, mushroom logs. My blueberries, they'll be alright tomorrow morning, 30, 35, 36, won't really hurt them. But the day after that, I don't know. Hopefully they don't frost and I end up with blueberries. Would be wonderful. And then I have all my fruit trees are... Um, putting on fruit as long as they don't get bit back. My pine trees, I collect pine pollen and they're almost, they're almost ready to pollinate. So once they, uh, once they yellow up, I'm going to collect pine pollen. I like to, um, it's good for your, um, it's supposed to help with your longevity. It's supposed to help you feel younger and good for a lot of things. Um, yeah, my dogwood's blooming. Usually, the red buds bloom first, and they're about done by the time the dogwoods come out. But nope, my dogwood's blooming. My crab apples are blooming like crazy this year, thank goodness. And my plums are all done blooming, and they're making plums. They, um, it's, a uh, dropped some of its blooms, because it was covered, and there's no way it could have, you know, uh, sustained all of them. But looky here. I don't know if you can see that little, see that little plum inside there? Look at that baby plum. So if they don't get frosted, it'll be great. This, uh, this is a, uh, native plum so they'll be itty bitty plums but they look like they're gonna they're germinating pretty well they're not germinating pollinating pretty well too anyway i'm joe and i just thought i'd do kind of a walk around yeah my my girl rabbit i bred a little over three weeks ago she should be having babies right now but she didn't she pulled fur and that was it that's all she did and um, I got a duck that's kind of thinking of setting a nest. She's not, she's not on lockdown yet, so I don't know how serious she is. But she sits on that nest every day for most of the day. Got my onions in here, some radishes, some potatoes, that pretty strawberry. Oh, and garlic. My carrots are doing pretty good. I planted them shoot February, I think it was. And I got, um, I planted um, purple potatoes in here around the perimeter, and they're coming up. Gooseberry that I took a start off of my gooseberry bush put over here. When, um, when it warms up, the, about the time I pull the garlic out, I'm going to put um, um, ginger. I got a bunch of ginger started inside. And I'm going to bring that out and, and plant it. And I got this volunteer poppy right here. A volunteer cornflower right there. And look at my rhubarb. Yeah, I'm letting my asparagus go this year. Because they're just, they're kind of spindly. I think I need to fertilize them. Either that or I need to dig them up and get them out of there, put them somewhere else. Because maybe the rhubarb is just too much for them to be down through the middle. I don't know. Anyway, my um, raspberries are budding up, getting ready to bloom. They're, uh, they won't be too long. I should... I'll have raspberries before I have blueberries because um, 
even after even after they pollinate they take a while to produce but you can see you see the raspberry buds coming up these were wild raspberries I'm trying to domesticate them somewhat, you know, grow them to where they're easier to manage and I don't get stuck so much. Last year I got probably, oh, I got probably a quart of raspberries off of this little patch. Hopefully I get more than that this year. I've turned it back. My rosemary has really took, it, took a beating. I have covered it. But this, uh, this zone, this climate right here is a little iffy. It's kind of hard on rosemary. Sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. Well, I'm going to let you go. I just want to do a little quick walk around, show you the goats, show you what I got going on grow-wise. I got, I don't know if you guys have this growing or not. This is, um, this is a wild mustard. It's actually really good kind of spicy like most three is but it's good for you I have it going everywhere it and chickweed and Queen Anne's lace which is wild carrots and purslane I got purslane growing got all kinds of stuff growing around here oh there's my oh I had my finger in the way sorry there's my lemon balm. And then I have, see all them little pink ribbons out through there? Those are various kinds of um, fruiting, nutting shrubs that I've planted in there. So I'm going to have to get in there and clean out some of that debris and weeds and stuff. I've got one hops plant that I planted. It came up last year. It's still a little early for it to come up this year, but it, it'll be coming up right right here. I got like sweet bush. There's some yarrow next to uh, some kind of dogwood. I can't remember. And I've got um, witch hazel, spice bush, hazelnut, some kind of cherry, choke cherry, or service berry, or I don't know, something like that. I've got one of those. I got sweet shrub and beauty berry growing in there. I just planted them last year. Well, I'm gonna end this. I've got to get back to taking care of stuff and we'll check see how this one's doing yet. Nope. No pollen yet. Well, talk to y'all later. Bye.